Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel Future Midwife. I am Danya. Basically, I am a master degree holder in midwifery nursing. I started this YouTube channel in order to enhance the knowledge of nurses, especially midwife. I hope my videos will be useful for you all. My videos contains many topics related to midwifery. Obviously, if you like my videos, please like it, subscribe it and click the bell icon for the further video notification. So without wasting time, let's we start our today's video. Today's video contain a brief description about female reproductive system. Anatomy of female reproductive system contains structures of internal genitalia and the internal reproductive organ. Besides that, female reproductive system contains accessory organs and primary organ. The primary organ is called ovary which is immature at the time of birth until the girl become puberty. So once the girl become puberty, it start to produce gametes every month and ready for the conception. As I said you, the female reproductive system consists of external female genitalia and internal reproductive organs. So first we will see about external female genitalia. So external female genitalia is otherwise called vulva. So which include mons pubis, labia majora, labia minora, clitoris, vestibule and hymen. So here in vestibule, it's a triangular area between the labia minora laterally from the clitoris at the apex to the foresheet. So which include four opening. So vaginal opening, urethra, partholin glands, paraurethral, ducts, etc. So here the paraurethral opening which is situated in the either side of the urethra. So it is otherwise called a skens duct. Partholin glands which is present in the either side of the vagina. So which secrete mucus and this mucus will keep the vestibule area moist. When we discuss much more about the external female genitalia. So these structures are referred to collectively as the vulva and include the mons pubis, the labia majora and the labia minora. The mons pubis is a pad of fat that is located at the anterior over the pubic bone. After puberty, it becomes covered in pubic hair. The labia majora are folds of hair covered skin that begins just posterior to the mons pubis. The labia minora is thinner and more pigmented and extends medially to the labia majora. Although they naturally vary in shape and size from woman to woman, the labia minora serve to protect the female urethra and the entrance to the female reproductive tract. The superior anterior portion of the labia minora comes together to encircle the clitoris. Clitoris is an organ that originates from the same cell as the gland penis and has abundant nerves that makes it important in sexual sensation and orgasm. Next we will see about the hymen. The hymen is a thin membrane that sometimes partially covers the entrance to the vagina. The vaginal opening is located between the opening of the urethra and the anus. It is flanked by outlet to the Bartholin glands. Next we will see about internal female reproductive organs. The internal female reproductive organs include vagina, cervix, uterus, fallopian tubule and ovary. First of all I will explain about vagina. The vagina is a muscular canal approximately 10 cm long. That is the entrance to the reproductive tract. It also serves as the exit from the uterus during menses and childbirth. The outer wall of the anterior and posterior vagina are columns with the ridges. The superior phonics meets the uterine cervix. The cervix is the opening to the uterus. The walls of the vagina are lined with an outer fibrous adventitia, the middle layer of smooth muscles, an inner mucous membrane with the 
transverse folds which is called a rugae. The vagina contains many microorganisms which protect the vagina from infection. These microorganisms are from the genus called lactobacillus. This lactobacillus uh, organism produces lactic acid. This lactic acid always makes the vagina in acidic in nature. That means the pH below 4.5. And also we, uh, this presence of lactobacillus always make the vagina as a self-cleansing organ. Next, we can move on to the another internal reproductive organ called ovaries. The ovaries are the female gonads. There are two, one at each entrance to the fallopian tube. They are each about 2 to 3 cm in length, about the size of an almond. The ovaries are located within the pelvic cavity. The ovaries itself is attached to the uterine via the ovarian ligament. The ovarian stroma forms the bulk of the adult ovary. Oocytes develops within the outer layer of this stroma, each surrounded by supporting cells. This group of an oocytes and its supporting cells is called a follicle. Next, we will see about fallopian tubes. The fallopian tubes are the conduit of the oocytes from the ovary to the uterus. Each of the two fallopian tube is close to but not directly connected to the ovary. The isthmus is the narrow medial ends of each uterine tube that is connected to the uterus. The wide distal infundibulum flares out with a slender finger-like projection called fimbri. The middle region of the tube called the ambula is where fertilization offer occurs. The fallopian tube has three layers. An outer serosa, the middle smooth muscle layer, an inner mucosal layer. In addition to its mucus secreting cell, the inner mucosa containing ciliated cell that beat in the direction of the uterus, producing a current that will be critical to moving the oocytes. So next, we can move on to uterus and cervix. The uterus is the muscular organ that nourishes and supports the growing embryo. The average size is approximately 5 cm wide by 7 cm long and it has three sections. The portions of the uterus superior to the opening of the uterine tube is called the fundus. The middle section of the uterus is called the body of the uterus. The cervix is the narrow inferior portion of the uterus that projects into the vagina. The cervix produces mucus secretions that become thin and stingy under the influence of high systemic plasma estrogen concentration and these secretions can facilitate sperm movement through the reproductive tract. So next we can describe about the layers of uterus. So uterus has three layers. The outer perimetrium, the middle myometrium and the inner endometrium. Perimetrium is the most superficial layer and serous membrane. Myometrium is a thick layer of smooth muscles responsible for uterine contraction. Endometrium is the innermost layer containing a connective tissue lining covered by epithelial tissue that lines the lumen. It provides the site of implantation for a fertilized egg and sheds during menstruation if no egg is fertilized. That's all about today's video. I hope my video contents which enhances your current knowledge of female reproductive system. So next we will see with an another topic of midwifery nursing. Thank you. Thank you.